So to create a basic worksheet, well, just go ahead and find a cell and start entering in your data. Now the data could be for a mini database or a large one for that matter, or it can be to perform calculations and functions. And we'll do a combination of both, but we'll keep it very simple to start off. And you can start anywhere within the worksheet, but since we're already in the upper left hand corner, how about if we start there, better yet, cell A2, ooh, big jump, and let's go ahead and type in the labels that we want for our database. Like I want months, hit the tab key and advances to the next column, but same row, sales, tab key, expenses, tab, and then profits. Now when I'm done typing along that row, when I hit enter, it takes me back to the beginning column, which is column A. And the reason why that Excel does that is because it can see a pattern that you started with, which was in column A. So for example, if I start in column F, and I type in 1, hit the tab key, 2, hit the tab key, and then I'm like, oh, let me click off, and they're like, oh, I need to go ahead and finish that pattern up by typing in 3, then hit the tab key, and then 4. When I hit enter, it's going to go to the next row, but under column H, because that pattern was reestablished when I, well, clicked off, but then I clicked back up here in the same row in column H. So when I hit enter, it doesn't go back to column F, but it starts off where I came back into the pattern from what we see to finish 1, 2, 3, 4. But from what Excel saw, you broke it when you clicked off. In any case, Excel does see a pattern. It does take a look at what you're doing to try to see if it can help out. And then to go ahead and delete this or get rid of 1, 2, 3, 4, just go ahead and with the white cross, you can see I'm moving my mouse around. There's the white cross. Click and drag. Now, if you don't select everything that you want to delete by hitting the delete key, like let's say we selected these three cells and we're like, oh, wait a second, I need to include number one, let me reselect. Make sure you get the white cross and you don't move it sloppily around because if you do and you come back and you don't go all the way over to the white cross, but kind of on the border of what you already have selected, you don't get the white cross, you get the four-way arrow, which means you can move the data that's currently selected in four directions, up, down, left, or right. So if I click and drag and move it down, Congratulations, we just learned something new in Excel, how we can move data by selecting it and clicking and dragging the border of the selection and we move the entire contents of the selection. So let's go ahead and hit undo. So you're going to find out that you want to focus on the white cross. So let's go ahead and with the white cross, click and drag to select and then hit the delete key on the keyboard and it's gone. Now below the months in that column, I've got my column labels for the data that I'm going to enter in below but I also want some labels for the rows. Like for the months, what months are we gonna have for our sales expenses and profits? Well, it's gonna be January, hit enter, February, enter, and then March. Now notice that when I type in the letter M, Excel quickly looks up above and, and sees if there's something else that begins with the letter M, and it sees months. So it has O-N-T-H-S highlighted saying, look, to help you with your data entry, if you want the same label, or the same text that's within the same column, just hit enter and it accepts it. If you're like, wait a second, that's supposed to be March. That's fine, go ahead and select it by clicking on the cell, hitting the delete key, then typing in the letter M again to spell out March. But if you're like, wait, it's pulling up O-N-T-H-S again, just ignore it and keep on typing A-R-C-H to get in March. Hit enter. And the reason why Excel does that, again, it's for data entry help. If you've got to enter in the same thing in the same column, it checks as that column and looks to see if it begins with the letter M. Now when I type it in again, M, it's not bringing up months because it's conflicting with something else that has an A after it versus an O. So if I go to A, then it says, okay, we got something else that begins with M A as opposed to hit the backspace key M O, then it looks up there and it says O months. So again, to accept it, just hit enter and you don't have to finish typing to make your data entry more efficient and make it look like you're really super productive. I'm going to hit the escape key because when you do that, in the middle of typing in something, it clears it out. So that way you don't have to hit enter and then go back and then click on the cell to select it and hit the delete key to get rid of the data or the contents within the cell. And then one row down, but in the same column, I want to get my totals, so I'll add the label for that. And now see if this makes sense. So I'm looking at my mini database. I've got my labels for the columns. I have my months, sales, expenses, and profits. And then for my rows, for the sales of January, February, and March, I also have expenses for those months and my profits, which will be a simple formula that we'll talk about in a later training video. Right now, I just want to show you how to create a simple database. And then for my totals for all the sales, January through March, also all the expenses and the profits, hopefully we've got some. Now let me go ahead and finish entering in the data in the database, like our sales. 500, hit enter, and then 685, it goes down to the next cell in the same column. 
195, hit enter, and then come back up here for our expenses. And that's it. Congratulations. You just created a mini database. Now you're probably saying, hey, wait a second, we haven't done some calculations to get the totals for the sales and expenses or also to calculate the profits. We're going to do that in a later training video. But right now, it's just data entry and how to enter in your data.